Hey everyone. Um, so today we just kind of finished up a few things from class last time and then started on our Zoom table. Um, the one new thing that we did was this line drawing techniques worksheet. It looks just like this, except it shouldn't be sideways. <laughs> um, if you're working from home, you should be able to just copy this on any sheet of paper and it's just asking for pretty simple stuff. Um, all of these boxes just want different types of lines drawn in them. And you can use the last six right here to kind of draw different lines and patterns um, that you come up with on your own. And then you can use techniques such as crosshatching, stippling, um, scribbles, wavy lines, any of these to shade these forms. Um, Please upload this um, soon. If you haven't done it yet, that's okay. Just email me. I know some of you are working from home and I'm a little bit late on this video today, so I'll probably bump the due date to a little later to accommodate that. So the other thing that we did is we started on our Zantango assignment. And if you watched our last video, you should have seen this PowerPoint. I talked about pattern and contrast. Um, if you would like to reference that PowerPoint, click through it. I did add a couple definitions I can show you after I recorded that video. Um, oh, sorry, no, I added a couple explanations, not definitions. So you can see um, that we have a couple, a little bit of more of like an in-depth discussion on what contrast is from class today. So just go over it really quick. Um, different contrasts and shapes. So this vase right here is more oval. Um, these apples or peaches are a little more round with circles. You can have contrasted color. These lines are very different to the contrast. Color contrast. Um, contrast is a concept that's pretty simple, but because it's so simple, sometimes it's difficult to understand or articulate. But basically, it's just like two different elements put together that are different and you're kind of comparing them visually. And then, if you have any other questions about this, I went over it in the last video, um, but if you have more questions, I understand sometimes these words can be a little confusing, um, so just let me know, and I can work to explain that a little better. But, yeah, the only difference in this right now, as compared to the last video I posted, from our last class is that I just added a couple more examples here in contrast, but everything else is the same. So after you've looked at this, um, oops, watched our class video from last time, and you've completed the line drawing techniques worksheet, then you can start on the Zentangle assignment. Today in class we started on it. Um, this is going to be due next week. We'll have another class day to work on it. Everyone seemed to get maybe halfway there. Um, this PowerPoint's a really good resource for you to look at for this project. It has a lot of examples on it. There are This first page right here is really great because it has a lot of different pattern examples that you can use in your drawing. And I explained a little bit about Zintangle last time, but if you want to know more, you can read through this. Um, it's just a great way for us to learn how to use a line. And I, I just wanted to record this video to show you some additional examples that I didn't show you in the last video because maybe it'll kind of get you going on different ideas, but you can start out in a lot of ways. Like this person made circles, and then you can see that they went in and they filled in each of the circles with different patterns. You can be completely abstract. It looks like this person drew a giant scribble on their page, and then they drew all the patterns in between. Um, got a lot of lines here, great Zentango examples. You can start with a shape and kind of contain your patterns in that shape. Um, another option you have with this project, I know some of you like to work realistically, you might like to draw portraits or, you know, different things that we see in nature or other realistic things. Um, you can totally kind of have a realistic component to this project if you'd like. This is optional. 
but if you would like to have a realistic part to this project, by all means, go ahead and do it, because I think it will turn out really cool. Um, these examples here, these portraiture, so this person has um, drawn and colored in a face, and then around it, they did their Zentangle design. Um, so these are kind of explaining the two routes you can go. You can be completely abstract, or you can have a little bit of realism in there. Um, color is also optional for this project. If you would like to use color, you totally can. I would recommend using the color after you've drawn the Zentangle. So draw everything down with your Sharpie, marker, whatever you're using, and then go in and color it. It's kind of like you're making your own coloring page. And then these are the requirements of the assignment. So you can read through those and get your project done. So I will keep you updated on our progress in class. Um, for now, today, all you need to make sure that you have is this line drawing techniques worksheet check, or, sorry, turned in. And then that you need to have looked at or watch the video from class last time on pattern contrastings and angles. And then you're watching this video now, so it's another check mark off your list. And then just start on your Zentangle. And if you can get about halfway done with that before our next class usually meets, then you will be right on track. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you'll find your Google Zentangle. It's a really fun kind of project to do. Um, a lot of people find it very meditative and calming, so I hope that you have a really good weekend and maybe this will be kind of a fun thing for you to do over the weekend.